welcome to Guide to the Unknown. I'm Kristen. I'm William. And we're back to scare each other and scare you in the process. Oh, are we? Yeah. Boy, are we. Mm -hmm. Kristen, how are you this evening? I'm great. I'm a little hyped up. William, as you might know, I had four squares of dark chocolate before we started. Mm, I do know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that has a lot of caffeine in it. It's a darker quality of chocolate. Yes. Um, I'm a little bit energy rich. Yes. <laughs> Just like my chocolate was cacao rich. You know what? It's nice to have high energy levels. But, but I'm going to be up till all hours. I'll tell you what, my chocolate intake also through the roof. <laughs> However, typically we feature two sentence horror stories, not doing mm-hmm, it this week. Right. Though I do have a little bit of a horror story for you. Okay. As I told you before we started recording, I had two brownies this uh, evening. What was wrong with them? I bit into one, thought maybe there was a peanut in there. Oh. Now, I don't have a peanut allergy. What to say, so? I just don't like peanuts in my brownies. Who it the was, hell makes... It was a chocolate chunk. <laughs> Who makes brownies with whole peanuts in them anyway? Is that something that's something you've encountered? Oh yeah, there 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 are plenty of brownies. Let's get a brownie check. People tweet at GTTU pot if you've ever heard of a brownie having nuts in them. Oh well, yeah, like nut, but like a whole peanut. (laughs) Yeah, not like like... a peanut shell. (laughs) No, I I didn't think that. What do you think I mean? Like a whole like the peanut nut. Like I've never seen a brownie with just like peanuts floating inside of it. No. Like where you couldn't see it. I think sometimes brownies have like chopped nuts on the top it and was, you're like well aware. Well, it was more that I took a bite and sensed an obstruction. <laughs> it's about to say an obstruction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, welcome uh, to the show. Uh, we're very excited. We're yep. going to feature something a little bit different yeah. this week. Yeah. Something that we haven't really done before. Yeah, totally. Uh, we have a very enthusiastic mm-hmm. audience. Yep. We love it. We it love talking with everybody online. Rules. Yeah. And it seems that now people are sending us their own paranormal stories. Yeah. A side effect of having a horror show that I never anticipated. Me neither. And it is so sweet. It is a wonderful yeah. thing to come out of doing this every week. Completely. Yeah. So do you have the first one at the ready? Well, we're only going to say one tonight. Yeah. Um, we're going to do one yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't want to overload you. So if you sent one right. in, You may be featured in a future episode, but uh, tonight we are going to tell this story that was sent to us by our good friend, Dolores. That's right. Uh, Do you want to read it or should I? You go ahead. I'll go ahead. Hello, Kristen and or William. (laughs) Turned out to be and. (laughs) I have been a big fan of your show since Book Club Schmook Club, and I am loving Guide to the Unknown. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm finally getting around to contributing to your show with my own spooky, weird experience. It's sweet. Sometime in the early 1970s, when I was four or five years old, my family was stationed at Homestead Air Base in, in, uh, how did I do that? Florida. (laughs) Cala, Florida, I think I was going (laughs) to say. At the time, my father was often away for long periods of time, leaving my mother to care for myself and my brother, who's three years older. As an adult, I realize now that my mother was probably severely depressed. She would be sullen and quiet most of the time and have bouts of crying. At the time, of course, I had no idea what I was doing was ro- uh, what I was doing wrong or how to make it better. My brother and I shared a bedroom at the end of the hallway. With the hall light on and the bedroom door open, we could see the length of the house down to the living room. My mother's bedroom was on the right of the hall and the bathroom was on the left. One evening, as I lay in the dark bedroom, I watched my mother shuffle across the hall from her bedroom to the bathroom. Right behind her was another copy of my mother, wearing the same nightgown and also shuffling slowly. However, this copy stopped right in the middle of the hall and turned her head to look at me. Uh. I can only remember that even though she looked exactly like my mother, her eyes were darker and her smile was malevolent. She turned back and followed my mother into the bathroom. I'd die. Too terrified to do anything, I simply turned to my brother in the bed next to mine. He, too, was looking at me with confusion. He had seen the double as well. I honestly don't remember us doing anything about it after that. Did we simply go back to sleep? Did we confront mom afterwards to see if she was okay? I just don't remember. As the years passed, I eventually put it down as the nightmare of a toddler. However, a couple of decades later, when we were both in our 20s, I was chatting with my brother about a creepy paranormal book I was reading. There was a section on evil doppelgangers, and I told him about my memories of seeing a double of mom. To my surprise, and his, he remembered the incident as well. We both went quiet, and we have never talked about it since. 
My very basic research says that doppelgangers are often associated with evil intent. And the face of a doppelganger, and the face of the doppelganger, was certainly evil. If it replaced my mother, then it had a pretty good life, (laughs) as my mother is still alive and doing pretty well at age 93. Yeah, and then there's a picture of her mom. Yeah, which is very sweet. yeah. Yeah. Living her best one playing. I never know how to pronounce it. I don't know if it's Lotteria or Loteria. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know that it's a card game. Yeah. Either way. Gaming. Yeah. yeah she gaming. Yeah. Amazing story. Thank you so much, Dolores. Yeah. For sending it in. I did a, a smidgen, a light smidgen of research into doppelgangers. Yeah. Kristen, it seems like a lot of monsters come back to Irish folklore about warnings. Oh, really? Yes. Sometimes a doppelganger is similar to a banshee, like yeah. we discussed in a previous episode. Uh-huh. It is a, a, a sign that something bad is on the way. Oh. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, it seems like everything, you know, went all right. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But maybe either it was way, like, yeah. maybe it was kind of like, a, I don't know, maybe not bad things were on the way, but like she said that her mom was kind of in a depression. So maybe it was sure. kind of like, bad things are going on the embodiment yeah. of a difficult time almost like a pseudo poltergeist in a way yeah yeah interesting very interesting yeah wow either well, way that's a great story an amazing story yeah thank you yeah thank you so much for sending that in that must have been freaky we'll have future episodes where we tell stories yeah. from listeners of paranormal experiences yeah if absolutely. you've had any of your own do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Yep. The pros. <laughs> That's right. At handling situations like this. Mm-hmm. We'll just talk about it. We'll deliver your situation with grace and a plum. Yes. You can uh, send everything to at GTTU pod, whether you're on Twitter, Facebook, mm-hmm. or Instagram. Yep. Slide into those DMs. Right. That's what the cool people say. <laughs> Uh, or you can email gttupod mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Yeah, we would love to hear them, and then we'll read them on the show. So thank you. would love to hear them. Yeah, thanks yes. for the material. So there, <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. Yeah. Uh, let's jump into our topics for All right. the week. Let's get it cracking. Chrissy. Yeah. You're up first. Okay. <laughs> William, what do you know about the Denver International Airport mm. Mm. and the horrors within? I've had a Denver omelet. <laughs> It's closest I'll ever get. <laughs> really? Why? Uh, I've never been to the Denver yeah. International Airport. I've never yeah. been to Denver. Yeah, me neither. Okay. <laughs> a the taste d- of Denver <laughs> is what they say when you order a Denver omelet. What is in a Denver omelet? Is that ham? Let's find out. I Siri? <laughs> Where's my phone? Um, <laughs> you don't even have an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Denver omelet. <sighs> Just everybody hold for a moment here. I mean, it looks like it might have peppers. Peppers. <laughs> All right. Uh, one quarter medium red bell pepper. Oh, wow. Green pepper, onion, bacon, ham, American cheese. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. You know what? I'll have one. Send it to me. I don't love ham in an omelet, though. I prefer what, just bacon. What's that P.O. box? Where can people send us a Denver omelet in the mail? <laughs> I don't say it publicly, publicly, but if you want to DM or email me, I'll tell you where you can send things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the Denver airport has like really weird stuff going on with it. Th- so the theory, the conspiracy theory about the Denver airport or rumors or whatever, is that it's the meeting place and future home of the New World Order. Oh. Um, what? Why do I know this? About, actually, about the I Denver actually, airport? Yeah, I'm not kidding. I might know this. Why would I know Did this Did you watch story? an episode of Jesse Ventura's conspiracy theory show about it? Because I tried to. Do you think I did? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> not surprised when that you, you tried When to. you Google it, it, that episode comes up a lot. And I started to watch it. It's on YouTube. You guys can Google it. Um, he speaks so slowly that I wanted there to be like a speed up button. Yeah. Like, you know how audio books are at least on audible that it has an option to do like 1.25, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is going to take forever. Jesse set it to times four. Go. Oh my Let's God. Go, baby. And like, there was a, you know, they had it set up. The conceit was that there's this guy who was like reaching out to him for help because it was getting to, which is kind of getting into part of the part of my story. But that it was it was 2012 when they released this or filmed it. So let's say it's 2011, 2012. Okay. And that there was going to be a solar flare in 2012 that was going to, you know, like wipe out the planet. 
um, it, it, it had to do with the Mayan calendar thing of sure. the world ending on 2012. And he's like, and the, the guy, kid, whatever, is like, NASA knows that everybody's saying it. And Jesse's like, well, why isn't anybody doing anything about it? And he's like, I don't know, Mr. Ventura. That's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. That's so awesome. the, the main theory yeah. is that the Denver International Airport um, – is set up to be the future home of the new world order when there's an apocalypse, like a nuclear apocalypse yeah. or the 2012 Mayan calendar solar flare. That seemed to be, well, the, I don't even know if they said solar flare, but the, you know, 2012 end of the world. I think that that was the main thing until 2012 came and went. And then they needed and a now new excuse. it's a nuclear Holocaust that we're looking at. Okay. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Okay. That's basically what I wrote. So the proof of that, William, it's everywhere in the airport. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so first, I mean, this is, it, it honestly is very strange. I d- spoiler. I don't think that that's what's going on, but it is a weird airport with where there are a lot of weird things in there that okay. I think it's just like a bunch of people with strange tastes came together and it makes it all look very suspicious together. Yeah. Well, suspicious, but not because like, if you're really trying to do something secret underground, why would you have all these symbols there? Well, I mean, you, are strange. you talking about the architecture of it or are you talking about not architecture? Real? Well, some pieces are architecture, but yeah, um, design things, um, art within the place, just weird choices. I'll, and I'll tell you about it. Hmm. Okay. So the main thing, the biggest issue that people talk about with this is that they buried. Well, okay. So, okay. The order of this, I should say is, First of all, the place when they were building it went way over schedule and way over budget by $2 billion. Oh. And so people are like, well, why did it take so long? What was going on? They keep, kept needing more money. When it was finally done, they put a time capsule in it, which sounds like it has totally sweet stuff, like a viewing guide to Beavis and Butthead. Oh. I would, because it was 1994 that this happened, I should say. How do I join the New World Order? I know. <laughs> That's some excellent it, reading material. What is the viewing guide to Beavis and Butthead? Is that like the Wayne's World Companion? book that you had you know what i mean yeah i guess <laughs> yeah, i don't, I don't know. know but so in episode <laughs> three of season four they watched the cotton eyed joe music video <laughs> for a solid five minutes yeah. in the, the next weird... episode cornholio shows up again <laughs> the weird mia jovovich music video yeah um so there's this time capsule and the top of it which they call a capstone was made by the freemasons so that's a fact the freemasons made this thing okay because let's re- let's remember they're dealing in concrete and stone, the Freemasons. Light, can you lightly gloss over who the Freemasons even are? I'm, I'm vaguely aware of it, but I've never really, whenever people talk about the Mas- Masonic <laughs> I temple. I and- always have to remind myself of it, and yeah. I wish that I had written it down here. So the Freemasons are not a secret society, but kind of a um, secretive society, I should say. Okay. And because a lot of people who are really powerful have been Freemasons over time, like lots of presidents, lots of people in positions of power, there's an idea that the Freemasons are kind of like a, again, secretive society that like builds each other up and everything. And that they might be kind of all talking to each other and orchestrating events, which is basically what the new world order idea is. So the Freemasons and the new world order are connected because people believe that the Freemasons build up a big part of the new world order. So the Freemasons are a factual thing. The new world order is not a factual thing, but one that people really believe. And so they're thinking that people who are made from different countries, countries, maybe even opposing political forces and everything still work together and scheme events in the world, like wars and things like that to benefit each other or do each other favors in different ways. One of those ideas that there are like secret groups that control the banks and right. uh, Yeah. Right. Like the Bilderberger group, which is a real group. And it's not the Bilderberger group. That's, Bilderberg. That's my group. <laughs> it's like Build a Bear <laughs> Burgers. Only. That's right. Bilderberg. Get your hot and dog out of here. It's mostly rooted in anti Semitism. Now, there, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. I, I remember that. Now, there's a decent chance that I went to a wedding at a, mas- at a Freemason temple. Yeah, that could be. I mean, because Freemasons are a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that could totally be. But why don't you know? Because I don't. I know I was at a wedding. Yeah. I don't remember if I'm thinking of the right thing. I'd love for it to have been part of a secret society. Well, but what makes you think it was a secret society or Freemasons or anything? I don't want to say anything else about it. What? Not on camera. Ugh, William, I kind of remember. Okay, I'll move on. <laughs> um, sorry, guys. 
so yeah, so they built this capstone yeah. that is the top of the time capsule. And it does say weird. So it has the Freemason symbol on it and everything. And the thing that really gets people going besides the Freemason involvement is that they're on the stone, it says something about the New World Airport Commission. Ooh. So that makes people think of the New World Order. Maybe so, the, maybe the New World Order is a mistranslation of New World Airport. <laughs> so what it I'm going to do only is... It was supposed to be a weird airport. I'm going to tell you all the weird things awesome. in one section. Then I'm going to tell you the pushback is the way that I've, I've segmented my paper today. We have theory. We have proof section which is what is the weird stuff. We have the pushback section and then we have bits and bobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get to bits and bobs. It's not that much. <laughs> um, I actually do that with, um, well, we, we're doing two episodes tonight. You guys aren't going to see both of them, but I structured both of them that way and I really enjoyed it. Wonderful. There's also bits and bobs for the next episode that you guys will let ne uh, next see. <laughs> Too much chocolate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so the, the new world airport, commission really got people going as well as Freemason involvement. Yeah. And when they broke ground and everything, like the Freemasons were there, they were wearing their ceremonial aprons, which I didn't know was a thing. And then I looked it up and it is like a little apron that kind of looks like an envelope. It, it has kind of like a cross on it, like not an up and down cross, but it has just kind of like a, an X on it basically. Huh? Yeah. And is it an apron, like a chef's apron? Yeah, not like a full body one, but like it goes around your waist, almost a like a loincloth cloth with nothing in the back. Mm, the best kind. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Party in they, the back. <laughs> they wear Bus clothes under it. But still not business in the front. Well, I don't know what it depends on the person, probably. <laughs> is it weird that it's like it would be party in the back, but your business is around the front? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. Well, no, it was 1994, so not. I was going to say because the apron, it's like a rectangle and has kind of a cross on it, it could look like an envelope. I wonder if anybody made any sort of like dick in a box joke or dick in the box joke about like like you open you open the envelope and there right. it is um so the freemasons were there and they always kind of get this air of mystery going and kind of get people's hackles up yeah so people started to be like huh strange and then all this other stuff obviously compounded the strange yeah um so there so there's just like a lot of weird kind of sinister or suspicious art in the um, in the airport. There are gargoyles hanging over the baggage claim area. Um, what do you mean? Like a stone gargoyle. Oh, like like yeah, gothic architecture. Yes, yes. cool. Right in the baggage claim area, but it's a gargoyle sitting in a suitcase. It's like an open suitcase, but then with like a mad gargoyle in it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> there is a thing that is nicknamed Blucifer. Um, out front, it is a 32 foot horse that looks angry, like a rearing up horse wow. with glowing red eyes. And when it was being built, a piece of it fell onto it and killed the sculptor or designer or whatever. Ooh. So it was finished by his associates. Yeah. Um, so that's weird. That's and so, wild. yeah. So people say that, um, is that one of the horses that carries one of the horsemen of the apocalypse? Oh yeah. Something to think about. What are they? Pestilence, famine, war, and death. Maybe. Yeah. yeah I don't know. There they are. Okay. Um, there are weird freaky murals. Like you guys should Google all this stuff. It's really crazy looking. So there are a bunch of murals while you're walking through one of the terminals and some of it is fine. I mean, it's not just like packed with like death and weird things. Some of it is nice, which I'll get into in the pushback section. But um, it the mural has a Nazi soldier wearing a gas mask, which is very strange. Um, and not, a, not imagery that you want associate. Can you imagine right, if you have right. anxiety about flying? And you're dealing with this gigantic mural and there's a Nazi with a gas mask? Yeah. That's not very calming. No, not at all. Or assuring. And there's also in the corner of one of the murals, there is a note from a child Holocaust survivor, like painted mm. into it. It's weird. Um, so there are these weird murals with like very aggressive evil imagery kind of. <sighs> yeah. Um, weird. And then – also, there are rumors of secret tunnels below the airport. So with that, that's like um, this is the place where the New World Order meets and gets in and out of the airport because being under an airport is perfect because right. they can fly in from all over the world. Cool. And or lizard people. Oh, of course. And or aliens. Um, 
And what else? I guess lizard people and aliens are basically the things. Oh, and I forgot to write it down, but I found it when I was writing. Um, oh, this could kind of go in the bits and bobs section, but whatever. Um, so there's talk about how in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, they give coordinates for a place where there is an alien landing. Yeah. And a lot of people say that that's at the airport. So like, what's up with that? But it's actually 51 miles away. <laughs> I love it when there's stuff me like too, that. Me too, me too. And the other thing that I forgot to write down, because I think it's so stupid, <laughs> is that people say that the, um, what do you call them? The runways. Yeah. The runways are shaped like um, a swastika. Because there's a lot of like Nazi talk yeah, and everything. Yeah. And I looked, I do not think it's, sh it, that's a weird misshapen one arm is shorter than the other swastika. If yeah. so, it looks more like a warped pinwheel, if anything. And the reason that they built it that way, I'll use this to lead into the pushback section is that that way they could have multiple planes taking off and um, landing at the same time or something, regardless of like weather stuff, or maybe not mel multiple planes, but they had different runways to go from in case wind is blowing this way. They can use this one. It's like all directions. Are I mean, covered. that just makes logical sense. Completely. Like, you don't want to like constrict the places where airplanes need to drive. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. It's so goofy. <clears throat> so, um, the capstone, explanation or pushback is that the Freemasons just straight up like they made it. They made that capstone. That's a fact. Okay. That doesn't mean that they're doing a bunch of evil things with the airport or helping, you know, get the new world order in there and the new world airport commission. This is so dumb. First of all, it was an airport commission that was just formed for this airport going up. And they say that it's most likely an issue of a missing comma. Huh. It was the new world airport commission. Because it's an international airport. Awesome. I know. Um, that's, but that's also the kind of thing that you could be like, well, yeah, like why would they make such a stupid, simple mistake though? Isn't it more likely that they were right. actually trying to communicate something? I like to play like, devil's no, I know. advocate. I know? feel like everything that you could play devil's advocate with this falls apart when you say, why would they want a bunch of blinking signs saying that the New World Order and the Freemasons and Nazis love it here? Uh, yeah. Why? It Agreed. all falls apart when you say that. They delight hiding in plain sight. <laughs> but that's like not even hiding that at that point, really. <laughs> they delight being in plain sight. <laughs> I guess so. I guess they're only hiding when they're in the tunnels below. Yeah. Um, the gargoyles. I read this article. Um, the artist who did the gargoyles was meeting with a bunch of other people who were designing art in the airport. Or, the, or you know, like the people who were in charge of art for the airport yeah. or something. And one of those people was a nun um, who was also an artist. And the guy who designed the gargoyles gargoyles was kind of inspired by the nun a little bit. He kind of just got like this religious idea in his head. And he was like, well, you know, gargoyles, you know, they look scary, but they're meant to be protectors. They're actually good. They're scaring off bad things. Huh. So what a cool thing to put in the luggage area where you want your things safe. That's But why just the luggage area? Like it's like – well, this will protect maybe, my Game Boy. Maybe put, put a bunch of scary gargoyles all over all the planes. Maybe he was just hired to do the luggage area. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Maybe they said we want sculptures for the luggage area, and he wasn't in charge of anything else. I don't think there are sculptures all over this place. Besides that, hmm, interesting. Yeah, um, the horse. Is weird. Yeah, it's a strange choice. Killed the guy. It's scary looking. Yeah. Um, the only kind of pushback explanation for that is that they had the eyes glowing because the designer's dad was a neon artist and he did that in homage to his dad to have some like neon in the mix. <laughs> Oh, feels weak. All right. And the, and the thing I read was like, well, he could have chosen a different neon color that didn't make it look so scary. What neon color? I mean, even I if it has like neon green eyes, it's, yeah, it's so still, weird to have this statue the, with glowing eyes. The horse's eyes. face looks mad. <laughs> <laughs> this horse is angry. Yeah. Um, the murals as a whole um, actually tell a story, basically. So there is freaky stuff going on with them, but it's telling a story throughout the murals of people and children working together to triumph over evil. Like the final thing ah. is like people coming together from nations and being happy and triumphing over evil. Still strange in tone, even in the happy thing, they're like on top of, like they defeated something basically. Um, it's weird. It's definitely weird. This is very strange. I'm, I'm right now. I have looked up pictures from the Denver airport. Mm -hmm. I am looking at part of the mural that has what, yes, appears it's to be hardcore. a Nazi swing. Not only is it, he holding an automatic rifle yeah. in his left hand, in his right hand, he's swinging a scimitar 
at a child that appears to be in rubble holding a teddy bear. Yeah. This is very weird. Yeah, it's extremely strange. Very weird. He's also like from top and, to bottom wearing green like a Scooby-Doo villain, like yeah. a ghost, like a ghoul. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And there are people crying all around it like in despair. It's so I one. think that that might be the first of the murals. And then progressively, hope comes to town. <laughs> hope comes to Denver. Really weird. Weird stuff. Yeah. So that is just strange. But to zone in on just that or just the Holocaust thing is not quite accurate to what this what's going on in there. Okay. Still weird as hell, though. Okay. And then the final thing, which is really interesting. So the pushback for the secret tunnels underneath, there might not really be pushback. There might be secret tunnels underneath. Hey, I support secret tunnels. Oh, me too. I I'm, believe they exist in many places. Exactly. That's the thing. Yeah. So. The um, author of the article that I read, well, one of the articles I read, but on Thrillist.com, um, it's a really good extensive article. He's the one who talked to, like, the, actually the nun who was one of the designers. He talked to the uh, mural artist. Yeah. Um, he, like, you know, kind of, like, got into it. So he talked to the architect who's in charge of the Denver airport. So he talked to him for a while, and then I'm just going to read verbatim because I may as well. Sure. Because I'm so good at reading verbatim. Um so he's talking to the architect. I ask him bluntly if there are any underground tunnels or secret bomb shelters, and I receive an astonishing reply. Well, I really can't speak to it, Fentress tells me over the, over the phone. I'm sworn to secrecy. He either has a sense of humor as dry as the Denver air, or he's not kidding even a little bit. Unprompted, Fentress goes further. I understand that they're going to be creating a tour of some of the underground facilities in the future at DIA. That's the airport. Yeah. I just heard I just heard that last week, says Fentress, who has worked on many airports besides Den Denver International. Then he makes an unexpected comparison. When you go to Moscow, you can go down in the area where they were poised to launch a missile strike against America, and they have this big underground bomb shelter about 100 feet down into the ground. Could be similar to that kind of thing with tours to the underground of the DIA. Is this bomb shelter remark a bombshell? Did the architect behind DIA just admit to the kind of the kinds of secret shelters and passageways that many have theorized? Not explicitly, but he certainly didn't deny their existence either. Finally, Fentress hits hints that there could be more answers, but that we might have to wait until 2094. There's a time capsule there with a lot of interesting things in it, he says. Some plans, drawings from the airport. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Now, and then I'm not going to quote all that. But basically, the author said just what you and I said. Like, you know, I believe there are probably secret tunnels places. Um, yeah. It's also theorized that it's like for FEMA purposes. Yeah, I, that's what I was going to say, um, too. It's an airport. You know, yeah. like if there's any sort of like emergency, right. they may need places for people to be able to mm -hmm. stay. Like yeah. a ton of people. Yeah, totally. That's very interesting. Yeah. Though. So I think that that could be. Yeah. Um, One of the people who's one of the spokesmen for the airport said they didn't hear anything about tours happening like that um but you know yeah 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 now that guy who was like i've been sworn to secrets secrecy like, yeah obviously that makes you go like oh like he wants you to be like oh this is gonna be good like he's yeah. definitely in this secret society or like they threatened him or something but like the person in the article said maybe he just has a sense of humor as dry as a denver omelet I, I, <laughs> well that doesn't sound like a very good denver omelet then no i had a bad one at the <laughs> store um <laughs> So I, I thought that I thought I legitimately thought that's what you were going to say when you started the sentence. Dry as a Denver omelet. <laughs> His sense of humor was as dry as a Denver omelet. Too much ham. <laughs> no, that would make it too wet. That's why I don't like ham and omelets. Ham and omelets. Ugh. I'll have a ham and omelet, please. No, I said ham in omelets. <laughs> Maybe they use those powdered eggs. Why would that be better? Or wor like, no, well, it's always it would worse. Be as yeah. dry as a Denver omelet. That's not dry. Those are more mushy, if Damn anything. Damn it. What's something dry that would go on an omelet? Herbs. As dry as a Denver omelet filled with Shock too many herbs. herbs. <laughs> now to bits and bobs. <laughs> um, so the airport has a distinctive fabric roof. It's kind of um, like triangles of fabric going across. It must be like super fabric that's reinforced or something. I don't know. Um, but the initial plan was to have it be designed after Mexican and Mayan pyramids. Huh. So just, can you imagine like the explosion of heads? If there were like Mayan pyramids on top of this oh airport as well, yeah, it'd be amazing. Especially with the Mayan calendar thing, right? Exactly. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, that's already a spooky thing. Right. The Mayan, like people have a lot of theories about the Mayan right. uh, temples or uh, pyramids and stuff. Yeah. But to couple that with the fact that people thought this was supposed to be a hangout for the end of the world. Yeah. And it has Mayan 
Oh. That would have blown minds. So cool. And um, also, I thought it was kind of interesting. So, like I said, they were super over budget and over time and everything. They chopped off months from their um, opening time by doing this kind of fabric roof rather than the pyramid thing. Oh, so I weird. thought it was interesting. Um, and also, really sweet. The airport totally embraces this conspiracy theory thing now. They tried to fight it at first, and then it became like, if you can't beat them, join them kind of thing. So the airport has wow. theme nights where you can go dress up as different aspects of things involved with the conspiracy theory. I imagine that it's almost like how... Um, the art museum in Philly has theme nights where you go dress up and walk around the museum and stuff like that off hours. But you can't just go walk around an airport. It must be a section of it or something. I'm sure it's not, you know. That's so wild. I know. And they have, I don't know if they have it year round, um, but they have a little conspiracy gallery with like a fake alien head and stuff like that. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And um, employees really embrace it. Apparently like sometimes. So there, there are, there are some underground tunnels that you can go into it. They, they're saying that there are secret ones that are lower than that, but there's some stuff for like that um, lay people. Or yeah. Maintenance yeah. and like lay people might have to go there every once in a while. Like if there's some delay up top, they shuttle them through there or something over. like that. Yeah. Um, and um, people who work down there will put on like a lizard like mask and be like, hey. I, I would feel embarrassed if somebody turned a corner. I'm dressed like a lizard. Just be like, oh, man, you're probably cracking up with your friends who you work with, and you're like, look, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I may, hey, well done, Denver. Sounds fun. Like, good on you for supporting that because that's also the kind of thing that with conspiracy theories, yeah, like we got the number thirteen out of hotels and stuff, yeah. Like, they could have gone the other way and been, like, paint over these murals. I know. These things were I'm glad they did It's so strange. I'm so glad oh, that. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Everybody go look up this horse yeah. with the glowing eyes. You know what? I'll have to post it. Last week in the episode, I don't know if anybody grabbed onto it, but I thought about it later. I said that if you followed us on social media that you'd find a clue to what I talk about this week. I was wrong and I lied to you and I'm sorry. You should never admit that. There are references no, 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 they could know. everywhere. No. Every word we use has been carefully selected to carry a secret message. Oh. Right? Yeah. Right? No, it's because I found an article about this and I was going to post it on our social media and I was like, no, this one's just for me, for the show. Yeah. I didn't actually post it. So uh, sorry about that. But okay. I'll post it soon. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Well, awesome. Yeah. That's totally. super cool. Yeah. If anybody out there is traveling through Denver, going to the Denver airport, yeah, take pictures, take pictures, record a little video and post it online and be yeah. like, I heard about this from guide to the unknown. Yeah. I would love to see that. That'd be rad. Okay. All right. I, Kristen, yes. I'm going to tell you a few stories. Okay. Mine is a melange. Beautiful. Wrapped up in a, in a willy okay. story. <laughs> I don't know. That doesn't make sense. So it works for me. just like how Dolores sent her, uh, yeah. paranormal experience to us, we got another message from somebody that I used essentially as a jumping off point for my topic tonight. Yep. Tonight, Kristen, I'm going to tell you about scary graves. Is there any other kind? There are. I found a lot of sad ones, too. <laughs> There's some funny ones, too. I kind of remember from um, like Weird New Jersey. They're funny ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're definitely. I mean, Nick Cage's. Nicholas Cage's 10 foot tall white oh pyramid in New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans, yeah. Angelique? I can't remember. Did you see that? Of course okay, I did. Yeah, yeah, I stood yeah. beside it. Yes. I did laid you, my hands upon it. Did you kiss it? it? No. <laughs> I ain't kissing that thing. <laughs> yeah. But I was told that's that the people thing. People do. Yeah. Yeah. He bought himself a giant white pyramid. By the way, if you're wondering, yes, he is still alive. Yeah. He's just getting ready. Yeah. <laughs> and he just like loves New Orleans, which I don't blame him for. But uh, he's right. Yeah, New Orleans. I love New Orleans. I love New Orleans. So um, one of our listeners, Kristen E., mm -hmm. sent us a story uh, through Facebook about the grave of Lily E. Gray. Sweet. Lay it on me. Okay. So this gravestone, it is laid into the earth. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, standing tall. Yeah. Uh, reads, Lily E. Gray, June 6th, 1881 to November 14th, 1958. Victim of the Beast. Six, six, six. So good. Uh, now, <laughs> not only is that awesome, it turns out that that has become sort of a a, a folklore legend. Uh, yeah, I yeah, would think. Around Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. So this is now the original message that we got from Kristen. Yeah. This is a headstone in, in Salt Lake City, Utah. My friends and I would visit it occasionally, and it always had weird stuff on it. The creepiest were black roses and a dead raven. Oh, my God. 
That's extremely creepy. Where'd you get that raven? Wow. I couldn't find my picture of the bird. Thank you for not finding it. Oh. But I'll ask my friends if they still have it. You know what? Don't worry. Really? Don't worry about it. Quick aside about dead animals, kind of. Um, one of my friends, Emily, sent me a link. Have you ever heard of the cat man? Of it's in like England or Ireland or something like that. It's a real guy. It's it's sad. I was gonna do it today before I like really read he it. Got and himself I was tattooed like, like a tiger. No, oh, no, that guy. That guy. Also yeah. sad. Yes. Um. No. It's I. She sent it to me, and I was like, oh, you know what? I'm not even gonna read this article until we're gonna do the show. Really long story sh- short. Um. There is a guy in England or Ireland or something. I can't remember. Who there were rumors about there being somebody a cat man who was eating dead rats around the town who paints his face all black and everything. And it turned out to be true. It's this guy who obviously is mentally ill or something who has black stuff all over his face, who eats rats. And there were pictures. So I saw a picture of this guy with like a dead bloody rat hanging out of his mouth. It was, that is going to stick with me. I have to give Emily crap. about that. Are you sure? 100%. This wasn't marketing for like. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It was like a, a Catwoman movie. <laughs> no, I, I don't think Cat so. There Man are multiple movie. pictures, and there were people being like, "No, this story sounds crazy, but it's real." Like I was coming home from the bar one night, I saw this guy. There are stories about people who are like, "It's sad but true." I've left stuff out, like food out for this guy before. I hope um, it was like real food, not like <laughs> I killed some rats myself. Oh no, I don't. Think I feel bad that he has to go hunting. Oh God. And like, it was sad. There was somebody who was like, yeah, there was one night where the bars were emptying out and these guys were like kicking him. Mm. And there are pictures of this man like on all fours. I'm saying it. I've never, it's, oh, so I, I was like, I'm not doing this. It's sad and gross. Yeah. So I've heard too much about dead animals today and yeah. seen. All right. Well, I was already done with that. But, I know, but I, it just made but, me think of it. I just wanted to tell you. thanks for giving that to me. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you. And everybody. I appreciate it. I do. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. So everybody, don't look up the cat man. Yeah, I mean, I guess if it's your jam, I mean, it's interesting. It's it's definitely an oddity, but I wish I didn't see Somebody it. Somebody out there is going, this is my jam. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. All right. Anyway. 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 Uh, I, asked, I asked Kristen to, I think we talked about this in a previous episode. Yeah. Uh, I said, tell me the story as it gets passed around. Right. Yes. Yeah. Just your story. Not like the, you looked it up thing. Yes. Yes. The The anecdotal thing. thing. The thing that people go like, have you heard of that grave? Right. It's this woman who blah, blah, blah. I want to hear what gets passed around in that village from person to person to person. Yeah. By village. I mean, Salt Lake city, Utah. (laughs) Village. So Kristen sent to me something about a wife being killed somehow. I remember hearing something about the beast being the devil and her being involved in witchcraft. There is something now about people leaving pennies on the headstone, but I'm not sure why. Oh, cool. Now, I might be able to fill in the gaps about the pennies yeah. and the bird and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. There is a real thing in voodoo about leaving offerings for people. Yeah. So actually, I'm glad we brought up Nicolas Cage mm-hmm. and his crazy Always. pyramid in New Orleans. Yeah. Because there's a voodoo priestess that's buried in St. Louis Cemetery Number 1. Mm-hmm. It's theorized anyway. Mm-hmm. And people leave offerings to her. Yeah. Also in the voodoo museum, people leave money, gift cards cards, cigarettes, anything yeah. Yeah. as offerings to the spirits. Yeah. So maybe there's something similar going on. Well, that's with a this thing in like spirit. a lot of cultures. Um, yeah. So it could totally be. I'm sure it's an offering for her spirit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I did some research into this grave mm-hmm. and I found mostly websites that are like, isn't this weird? Yeah. What a weird thing to have on the grave. I wonder what it means. Yeah. And then, and then uh-huh. I found ufodigest.com. Oh, I'm interested in how that connects. Uh huh. Well, there are new UFOs involved. I, okay. But it is more about it's the just fact, like a freaky website or something. I guess yeah. I didn't dig around the website itself, but the author of this post, Rochelle Hawks, uh-huh. ha- I, I assume that she does other research and stuff into phenomenon and yeah. you know, urban legends and stuff. Yeah. She cracked the case. Oh, cool. So everything I'm about to tell you is Thank due you, to the intense research of Rochelle Hawks that rules who in 2009 posted the full story on UFO digest.com. That's awesome. Mm. So, uh, all that was known about the woman, Mm -hmm. Lily E. Gray Mm -hmm. was that she died of natural causes. Yeah. Enter Rochelle. Yeah. She sent a photo of the headstone to coast to coast. AM. Oh, sweet. That radio show that we talked about that deals in spooky topics. Yeah. People, 
Uh, so then that story was, you know, said over the airwaves. Yeah. People began sending Rochelle uh, yes. their knowledge about the grave uh-huh. and about the person. Yeah. And anything that they could send her. And a lot of them were, you know, unhelpful. Yeah. A lot of psychics uh-huh. sending stuff to her. Uh, stuff about numerology. Uh-huh. As I mentioned, the gravestone says that Lily E. Gray was born on June 6th. Six, oh, my God. Six, 1881. There's not a third six. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> And then some people would be like, you know what? And here, go to this website for more information. Huh. And it would be sending her to ufodigest.com, her own Oh, website. really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. But then, in her research, she found documents on the Utah State Archives uh-huh. for one Elmer L. Gray. Oh. Now, we're talking what? about Lily okay. E. Gray, who passed away. Interesting. Here comes Elmer L. Gray. L-E-E-L. I know. That is weird. Huh. Yeah. E-L. E-L fudge. <laughs> they make delicious cookies. They really do. If you want to send us a sample. <laughs> Again, contact be? me for. <laughs> How many podcasts are, you know, today we're sponsored by E.L. Fudge. Use offer code FUDGY. Oh, my God. Maybe just nobody does because they haven't reached out to them. We should see if we can get sponsored by E.L. Fudge. Coming to get you. Oh, we're coming for you, elves. <laughs> elves are creatures. Oh, we should do an episode that could about be the elves. Tie-in. That could be the tie-in that gets us that good fudge money. <laughs> that sick fudge money pouring oh, all over yes. us. Oh, my. So she found a document. Uh-huh. It was Elmer L. Gray's pardon application oh i don't know what this is Uh it seems to be that he was in jail yeah and he was writing a document explaining why he should be pardoned for his crimes and let go Uh uh-huh a little bit of background on elmer yeah give me it he had (laughs) he had previously been married okay not to uh okay not lily not to lily e gray Uh uh-huh he was married to another woman who apparently died okay and it seems that elmer blames perhaps the police for her death. Okay. I do not have more about it about this. Okay. But I explain it to you because what is written on his pardons application, uh-huh. written by he himself, yeah. is wild. And so I want you to understand the timeline. Okay. Elmer L. Gray marries a, a lady. Okay. She dies. Gotcha. He goes to jail. Okay. He gets out of jail. Yeah. He meets Lily E. Gray, marries okay. her. Okay. Later on, she passes away. We see yeah. her headstone. Okay. Yeah. So- I looked at this document myself. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, uh, there is a question that says, I am serving under the name of, and he crossed out the word serving and changed it to, to read, I am kidnapped under the name of. What? So it seems that he has a whole thing that I don't completely understand. I think he was arrested. Okay. And he refers to it as having been kidnapped. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, he does not like the police. He uses the word kidnap all okay. over this application okay. multiple times. Gotcha. Uh, and then I don't really understand his answer to this question. I'm kidnapped under the name of. Okay. I don't know if that means that under the name I gave them was this. Yeah. Or if I am kidnapped under this like officer. Like that person. Okay. I don't know. Either way, his answer was, uh, I'm kidnapped under the name of Woodrow Lamb. A bum. <laughs> that's awesome. Now, I don't know if that's my persona was as a bum. <laughs> right. Or the officer who arrested yeah, me I, is a bum. Hard to say. I have no idea. Yeah. My offense was kidnapped by five Democrat officials. Oh. <laughs> What's the crime you're guilty of? Being arrested. <laughs> that's awesome. He also seems to suggest that the government was responsible for killing his first wife. Uh-huh. Saying, quote, kidnappers murdered my wife. <laughs> I guess it doesn't get more clear than that. <laughs> Have I made it clear enough? I think that's what he means. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I Maybe we should do a deeper dive in. Yeah. That. All right. So several years after the documents filed, he's married a second time uh-huh. to Lily. Uh-huh. Now, okay. Uh, there's documentation to suggest that he outlived Lily. Uh-huh. Which means that the person who would be responsible yeah. for, you know, putting together her funeral, her burial, right. and the inscription on her oh, gravestone okay. was a guy who says outlandish things. Okay. <laughs> who makes All right. preposterous yes. <laughs> grandiose yes. claims about what has happened. Yes. I'm surprised he didn't say she was kidnapped by you know, I know, the beast I know, six 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 or whatever. But who knows how much time passed? Yeah, maybe he elevated his thing he from being on. kidnapped by officials to being like, 
They yeah. are El Diablo. Yeah. They are the beast. Yeah, totally. So it is the theory of Rochelle Hawks from I think UFO it's a very good and yes, mine. Yes. That uh, essentially Elmer L. Gray had his wife's epitaph read. Victim of the Beast 666. That is because he some blamed the government. good stuff, Will and Rochelle. Isn't that amazing? That is really good research. Don't credit me. This is all Rochelle Hawks well, you of UFODigest.com. Rep- yes, you reported it to us, though, so thank you. Well done. Amazing stuff. Yeah. So anyway, like I say, I, I use that as a springboard to look up a, cu- a couple of other yeah. things. Uh, I looked up Scary Graves. T- yeah. Kristen? I found one that I had never heard of, and I had to include it. Cool. Uh, I'm showing Kristen right now, and I'll put it up in the YouTube version, an image of a grave uh, partially yeah. above ground. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. With wrought iron. Yeah. A cage around it. That's crazy. <laughs> Impenetrable. What people say, this this ca- this cage that covers a grave. Yeah is a Victorian era device Uh to prevent the dead Uh who may have been converted, you know, through evil. Oh, this is so good. Yeah. Into a vampire or into the, a member of the undead. The cage is supposed to keep them in that grave. Do not come out of the grave. Was that a common thing or did just like rich people do that sometimes or like, you know, you're onto something. You're onto part of something. Okay. Rich people did it. Uh huh. This cage is not to keep the dead in. Uh huh. It's to keep the living out. Out. Yeah. A cage surrounding a grave is called a mort safe. Oh my god, that's so awesome. So is it about to like keep people from stealing stuff from them? Like yes. if they're buried with jewels and stuff. It's to prevent grave oh robbers. My god. From breaking in. Grave robbers are disgusting. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What's wrong with you? But either way, it's not to keep yeah. vampires yeah. and zombies. That's so good. But being yeah. called a mort safe rules. Mort safe. You know, I dated a guy named mort safe once. <laughs> mort safe. Yeah, my buddy my buddy kept getting into the cookie jar, so eventually I put a lock on it. That thing was mort safe. <laughs> the buddy's name was mort, we're saying, right? Yeah. 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 You understand. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> um. I found out about this. This seems to be a one-off. Okay. Okay. It's a little sad, so okay. deal with that. All right. Okay. All right. In 1871, a little girl named Florence died. Uh-huh. Her mother uh, paid to have a storm door yeah. installed just behind the headstone. So this is literally yeah. a metal door in the ground yeah. that you can open, oh God. revealing a staircase that descends down into the ground, uh-huh. down to the depth at which Florence's oh, casket God. is buried. Oh, God. Six feet under. Okay. Reason being, yeah. young Florence was afraid of thunderstorms. And so when it would rain, her mother would go to console oh, her my sad daughter. God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. I told you to get ready. Okay. Told you to get ready. I knew it was going to be something like that when I realized that there were stairs and everything. I thought it was going to be that when the mother wanted to like be with her daughter oh, yeah, and I be like on the level of her. Well, yeah. let's, let's examine this a little bit. I mean, same thing, bit. kind of. Let's yeah. examine this a little bit. There's something about it that's a little too perfect, right? The idea that the daughter is afraid of thunderstorms and the thing that you get installed is a storm door to be able to visit her. It feels more likely that there was a storm door uh-huh. for some reason uh-huh. installed there and people are like, storms? I bet the kid was afraid of thunderstorms. Oh, maybe. Right? Yeah, Just to maybe. reverse engineer an urban legend. Could be. Could be. Now, that's also unfounded. I mean, who knows? Yeah. But uh, it feels yeah, that could be. like the origin of an urban legend. Yeah. Uh, either way, it does seem like I can only imagine a sad reason why somebody would want to. Go. Yeah. It's not as if the coffin was exposed. Right. You know, there was still there was still like a stone wall yeah. there sealing in the casket. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Either way, very, very odd. That's really cool, strange though. Strange grave. Yeah. This ha! one. Yeah. This one is a uh, Will and Chrissy favorite. Yeah. Uh, this is a grave that I talked about on my short lived Hunt a Killer series, The Haunted Hunt. Yep. Uh, where occasionally each episode I would maybe explore mm-hmm. a sort of paranormal ph- phenomenon or odd spot. Yeah. Um, and I featured this in episode one. This so is good. The Grave of Mary Ellis. Mm-hmm. Kristen? Why don't you tell people about what's weird about where this grave is located? That it's in the middle of a movie theater parking lot. That's right. Yeah. AMC Lowe's. Yep. In Edison, New Jersey. Is it Edison or? 
I'm not sure. It, might it could be, be Edison, Edison or maybe New, New Brunswick. Brunswick or North. Yeah. No, not North Brunswick. Edison or New Brunswick. Yeah. So behind the AMC Lowe's movie theater. Yeah. In the middle of the parking lot, there are spaces all around it. There's this raised up plot of land. Yeah. That is fenced in. There is grass in there. And there is the headstone of Mary Ellis. Well, and I lost our minds when we saw this. Like, when we moved here? When we moved here, yeah. Come on. Oh, my God. I was a very dramatic teenager. <laughs> yeah, as was I. And uh, anytime that I would go to this movie theater, I would deliberately park my car Hell yeah. beside the grave. Why? Yeah. To be dark and mysterious and different. Yeah, obviously, you're not an idiot. It was still cool. I yeah. still kind of do it sometimes today. I it's don't too awesome. anymore. I haven't seen it in a while, actually. Well, I, I usually don't go to that theater. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, according to oral tradition, mm -hmm. uh, Mary Ellis, who lived in New Brunswick, she was a mm -hmm. spinster, yep. was seduced by a sea captain who vowed to marry her. He never returned, and she would come to the spot where her grave now stands each day to look for his ship in the Raritan River mm -hmm. in New Brunswick. Yes. Mm. Really Except sweet it's legend. Potentially bunk. Right. Nobody knows for sure. Right. I might tell you something weird about this spot. Yep. That I think I've I've shared elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Um but uh so I was fascinated when we moved to New Jersey because I had never heard of weird New Jersey before. Yeah. And so being a fan of spooky stuff, I was like, oh my gosh, there's an entire magazine dedicated to my new state where I live about all the scary stuff. Yeah. I was also a big fan of a uh, local boy, Kevin Smith, uh -huh. the film director who made the movies Clerks, Small Rats, Chasing Amy, yep. so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> I read in Weird New Jersey about this grave. Uh -huh. I saw it. And it described how uh, that particular plot of land used to just be like, you know, uh, uh, grass. Yeah. Just all grass. Uh -huh. Obviously, before we paved it, turned it into a parking lot, and built stuff, yeah. it would have just been fields that would have overlooked the Raritan River. Right. And they showed a picture of the grave just surrounded by foliage. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And then there's a blurb that goes on to say, eventually... The lot was purchased. They paved, but decided to leave the grave mm -hmm. alone. So they cr paved only around it yeah. to preserve it and built on that plot of land a flea market. Mm -hmm. hmm. In the movie Mall Rats by Kevin Smith, mm -hmm. about two guys who go to spend the day at the mall, yeah. they eventually leave for a short point to go to what they call a dirt mall. Mm -hmm. And they drive up in this giant parking lot to the dirt mall. Yeah. That is where the AMC Lowe's now stands. Oh, I didn't know that actually. Yes. Oh. The grave of Mary Ellis. Uh-huh. If the camera, if the camera went around the dirt mall, uh -huh. you would have seen this grave. Oh, that's cool. Weird New Jersey described they later tore down the flea market yeah. and built a multi theater, you know, multiplex, whatever. Oh. And that you was know what? when it clicked in my head and I went, oh, so not only are we living very near, like 10 minutes away from this bizarre plot of land where there is a preserved grave yeah. from, what, a few hundred years yeah. ago? Yeah. Not only is that by a movie theater that I like, it's also featured kind of, sort of, yeah. in a movie that I like. Right. Which means that we're also living you know, near to a filming location for one of my favorite movies. Yeah. It was like the perfect, yeah. this weird, all these strands of things I like coming together yeah, to create... Yeah, yeah. A bizarre, I don't know, tapestry. Yeah. So totally. strange. Yeah, that's awesome. Fascinating. Uh, Mary Ellis's grave has also been suggested to be the inspiration for the 1972 mm -hmm. pop song, Brandy, You're a Fine Girl. That's right. Yeah. You're a fine girl. Wife, you would be such a fun. But my life, my, my love and my lady, lady is the sick. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that song. Uh, however, they later said no, it's not. Damn it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. That's all I've got for Spooky Graves, yeah. Chrissy. Great. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, fun. Yes. Oh, we have some fun. Oh, boy. Yeah. So thank you for having fun with us. You can continue to have fun with us by following us on social media at GTTU pod everywhere. Like we said before, you can email us your scary stories. We would love it if you would join our secret Facebook group. You can just search for Guides to the Unknown podcast and follow us on Facebook. Well, follow us everywhere. But uh, we post a bunch of spooky stuff during the week. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you enjoy this show, please mm -hmm. consider going to patreon.com slash GTTU pod where you can flick a little coin at us, put a little money in our tip jar. Yep. 
uh, as a thank you. Yeah, we would yeah, love that. We would absolutely yeah. appreciate that. And we'd also that. really love, not to be overly neat or anything, but if you give us reviews, we don't have any 2018 reviews on, um, what's it called, on Apple Podcasts. Mm. Um, it would be really nice if we had some reviews on there. We kind of, we have some reviews and they're awesome and I really appreciate it, but we stalled out. We've had the same number for like a pretty long time now. So I would love it if you guys could just do a quick review of us on yeah, there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Let's get yeah. that number going up. Yeah. Get totally. some reviews for 2018. That's right, baby. 2 k teen. That's a cool way to say the year. Very much so. I feel right. If you'd like other Bon Mots like that, where they can they find you, Will? Uh, I don't know what that means, but I'm at Haunted Sponge. <laughs> bon Mots are like clever little things. Mm -hmm. Bits and bobs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm at Haunted Sponge on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, yep. but I don't like Instagram, so I <laughs> barely ever go there. That's right. Kristen, where can they find you? I'm at Chillin' Kristen on Instagram and Twitter, and I do like Instagram. But I post more on the GTTU pod thing than on my personal Instagram, but you know, you can get a flavor of what I'm like outside the podcast on my personal one if you want to, so follow both. It give you a really well-rounded view of, of who is Kristen Rogers Anderson. And, a lot of people have been wondering. And what's she about? A lot of people are desperate to find out. Totally. All right, everybody. <laughs> we will see you next week for another episode of Guide to the Unknown. Yep. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for enjoying this one. That's well, right. we hope you enjoyed it anyway. It's be presumptuous. Yeah. So until next time we're all together, we must travel. Back to the netherworld. Go away. Let me swish our cloaks and get out of here. Sure. Sure.